Hi everyone, a little update here. So I've rebuilt uh, basically the whole thing. <laughs> so I've got the Tesla coil primary secondary driver, uh, third coil resonator, and uh, that's going to the choke and then th to the top load capacitance there slash somewhat of an inductance I guess. Uh, so now, based on this patent picture by Tesla, we've got patent number 336961, and this diagram here is what I've based the output uh, grenade coil on. So uh, that's going to be kind of what this output coil is based on here. So A and B are positive negative brushes, he says, and uh, C is the auxiliary, uh, which I found a use for as well here. But So you can see how, let's say it goes clockwise, the whole body, uh, it's starting at the top from A and down to B. Well, okay, down to X, and then it backs over itself, still clockwise, basically, though. And then it comes out near the three-quarter point of the top here. So, that amounts in turns to half of the length of the field helix, so. Here we've got... Uh, another B and H, or sorry, B and W coil underneath with the exact amount, same turns wrapped over it uh, to the certain point that was on the diagram. So this, where we've got the two points spliced and it starts to go back over the turns that it came from. So that I've got going to the one side where the bifiler caps, uh, series caps come in, and uh, really doesn't give any results any other way. So the turns on B, we'll say from the diagram, coming down to where I have the ground lug, which I had it up here originally. This was acting as line one, hot AC out and uh, this was for the ground, but now I've got them switched. So the ground stayed where it was, but now I've got, I guess, the polarity reversed from the output coil. Whereas I used to have the straight longest winding as the ground, now I've got what had been the line one as the ground. So. Yeah. Oh, but it did not work any other way, so it was definitely the phasing of the windings that had to do with that. So, uh, just glad that there was at least one way that it would work uh, with this Tesla uh, patent winding here. Because that's what I really want to go by instead of all these interpretations and, you know, when you measure an inductance and then you wind it reversed over itself and then it cancels out you know what do you how do you tune that but uh, anyway yeah more experiments will tell but this one at least seems to be matching now with the bifiler turn on this side and in series with these caps uh, going through to the yoke winding now, the yoke, uh, the push-pull is totally not working right now. Uh, I fried a transistor and then decided instead of building this uh, ZVS circuit again that I would just uh, build this uh, TL494 driver that Akula keeps posting. <laughs> so, another change I made here was the carbon resistors, uh, they're 1k resistors, and I've got two of them in parallel from the 
positive to base and two in parallel from negative to base so about 500 ohms going from both sides of the circuit uh, positive negatives to the base so that's balanced I guess and that gave me the ability now to with this potentiometer to come over both sides of the peak whereas in the past the resistance wasn't right and I could only ramp up slightly up to the peak but not even past it so now we can really dial in up and down of the resident point Okay, so here we've got 17 volts across the load, and that was by accident because I realized that this was touching. So, where I've got this come down to line one was accidentally touching the side of the bifiler um, caps here. So here's when I remove it. Here's when I accidentally put it back on. Off. Back on. So, what a nice accident. So, I'll leave that jammed up to the side. It's obviously not proper contact, but uh, just go like this. Okay. Yeah, it even pops up to 18 volts at times. Uh, but anyway, this is really nothing special, it's not full brightness, but I uh, finally am getting a tune on this uh, output coil again, having rebuilt it. So, uh, yeah, we're going to harvest this now and work with that, rebuild the push-pull driver, put that guy there, drive this by filer winding, which is now finally resonant with the Tesla coils, and uh, interesting here, we've got uh, just a regular radio, turn off the system, so we'll switch on the radio. So there's nobody on this station. So it works. So we'll turn on the system. Hear that? Turn off the system. Back on. Super clean carrier wave. Kind of like Vasmus uh, was showing. And uh, this is really behaving like V2 
Phasmus was showing actually how you could really tune over the peak and beyond so anyway pretty exciting now being able to tune this properly to get a proper rise and fall out of this instead of just a partial rise um, and then this accident that I noticed here with uh, line 1 AC touching the bifiler caps here instead of the ground so hmm, interesting and so one more thing is let's go down through the time so let's say here we've got about 1.25 megahertz 1250 AM basically <laughs> And there's no one broadcasting there that I could see, so not interfering. Uh, so let's go now. That's our fundamental, or we're not, uh, we don't seem to get any more detailed waves out of this, so we just keep zooming in right on that wave. So that's the 1.25 megahertz. So let's leave it in this frame division and check it. Okay. So now, let's go down in time. It's still a repetition there. About 625 kilohertz, that's the half. Huh, neat. 250 kilohertz, we got a strong pattern. Another wave appears, 125 kilohertz. Pretty nice harmonics. This starts to get a bit jumbly, but let's go to see this. Uh... Looks about right. 31.25 kilohertz, eh? That is right around where you see everyone tuning the grenade coil and the push pull circuit. Hmm. So pretty interesting. Uh, let's target that for the final tune. Anyway. Yeah, right around there. So, uh, just wanted to show you guys that before I added the uh, push-pull driver back. Just that I had rewound this, decided on some new coils here, which I have tried shunting at the uh, quarter point here, just to see if, uh, you know, it had a different effect here, but the voltage only falls um, if we shunt it at the quarter wave here. So you can see here, uh, there's really not much going on uh, if we've got the load on. Nothing too major. It's probably easier to see. Oh, and also, it uh, looks like the chain tuning changes with the load off. So we get that silent carrier wave back. And that sort of voltage appears back on the bulb. And you can see this probe here. Start to rise and fall with the uh, number of turns. And then this guy, of course, it's all the way up. There's a full rise on this coil. So, but the voltage is much lower uh, without using every turn on this coil. So, 
yeah I'm pretty happy with how this is ringing so now with that these harmonics have appeared from the you know nice spacing on the turns and no parasitic uh, capacitance that's uh, added on until you need it um, oh another thing here would be when we pull off this this backed over portion it's dropped about to 13 so with this back on which is on the ground or sorry that's the new hot line back up to 17 and the nice glow back in the bulb anyway so this is what we're working with and I'm gonna re-add that driver with the TL494 and full duty cycle and frequency adjustability and it's gonna be sweet see you guys and gals